Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers public information, filming police, and constitutionalism, and is brought to us by Gavin Seam's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. On January 21st, 2017, YouTuber and constitutional activist Gavin Seam was traveling through the town of Clute, Texas with his family when he noticed a traffic stop taking place and decided to pull over and film the encounter. After observing the stop for a few moments, Mr. Seam was confronted by Officer Kyle Garcia and Officer Amy Cantrell of the Clute Police Department. How you doing, sir? Can we help you? Well, we're just observing. Huh? We're just observing. Oh, okay. What's going on here? All right, no, this is a yeah, traffic stop. Why do you have somebody in handcuffs for a traffic stop? Well, it's not, it's not your concern, okay? Well, it's very much my concern. You work for the people, and I'm just observing to try and make sure no, that nothing untoward's going on. But I'm just, it's just a, I think it's a reasonably curious question. Is it normal to put somebody in, in handcuffs okay. for a traffic well, that's stop? Her, that's her business, okay? So oh, hi, ma'am. How you doing? No, I'm it's good, not. But you do need to get off my traffic stop. stop. No, I don't. I'm just observing. Okay, but I'm but I'm what I'm what I'm telling you is uh -huh. the person that was arrested. It's not any of your business because that's her personal business. What she got arrested for. So it's none of your concern. No, actually, that's a matter of public record, sir. Okay. Although interactions between members of the public and law enforcement are public information, there are proper channels for retrieving that information. And, as discussed many times on this channel, police officers are under no legal obligation to disclose the details of an interaction to any single member of the public. The Texas Public Information Act, which was formerly known as the Texas Open Records Act, was established by the Texas legislature in 1973 as a response to a major stock fraud involving state officials. The language of the act is spelled out in Chapter 522 of the Texas Government Code, and most states have similar provisions. This concept also exists at the federal level in Title V, Section 522 of the United States Code, also known as the Freedom of Information Act. Both of these acts, along with similar state provisions, detail the specific methods by which the public can request information, and generally include written requests for information or a specific form that can be filed with a public records custodian or officer. These laws are absolutely necessary to ensure transparency between government organizations and the public, and all members of the public have the right to request records and documents within the public domain. There are certain exceptions to which documents are available to the public, and each state maintains differing levels of transparency in regards to what information a citizen may request. It should also be noted that there are certain fees associated with procuring requested information, and those fees may scale according to how much information is requested and the difficulty associated with retrieving the information. Nonetheless, this is important information for any citizen to know, as it can play a major role in holding your government officials accountable, and has been a very useful tool for journalists nationwide. Mr. Seam is not entitled to the information about the stop without requesting it from the city's database, and he acknowledges this immediately. Hey, will you look it up in public record? Yeah. Oh, sure. I, and I can't force you to tell me. I mean, it would be it would be cordial of you to do so, um, but uh, I'm just observing. I'm not here to interfere, and uh, you guys shouldn't be uncomfortable with being filmed. I mean, it looks like you have body cams yourself, so it's not like you should be uncomfortable. Well, Can I ask how old you are? Can I ask how old you are? Yeah. Can we ask you a question? Okay. You can ask, yeah. The reason why we're here right now talking to you is because we're on a traffic stop and you pull behind us, okay? Right. And we don't know who you are. Yeah, I'm well behind you. Okay. So actually, what's weird to me is that you're on a traffic stop and you're over here talking to me instead of dealing with your traffic stop. Okay. Well, she's already detained, okay? What's your, what's your name, sir? I'm Officer Garcia. Garcia, I'm Gavin. What's okay. your name, ma'am? Cantrell. Cantrell. All right. You're, you're pretty young. Are you new? All right. You have a good night. Can y'all go ahead and leave the scene? Um, am I am I causing you some concern? Yes, yes you are, because you're behind our traffic stop. And you're Would it make you more comfortable if I pulled no, up on the side that, here? That's even closer to you us. Have two okay. Choices. Either you can leave my scene, or both of you are going to be arrested. For what? For interfering. How am I interfering? You're interfering with my traffic stop. I don't like you sitting right here behind. You me. don't get right. to dictate that, but All right. uh, Texas courts have generally upheld the right of citizens to film police in the course of carrying out their duties. And as recently as 2017, the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals confirmed this right in the case of Turner versus Driver. It is worth noting that the individual who was involved in this case, Philip Turner, is a First Amendment auditor and has a channel on YouTube called The Batosai. Although the officers involved in Mr. Turner's case were granted qualified immunity for impeding Mr. Turner's First Amendment right to record the police, once an officer is granted qualified immunity, no other officers are entitled to it for the same conduct. 
So if an officer impedes a citizen's right to record the police in the future in Texas, it is likely they would have no claim of qualified immunity now that it has been clearly established in the Turner case. And Mr. Turner's case is a prime example of the positive effect the First Amendment activism community has made. Unfortunately for Mr. Seem, the Turner decision was issued in February of 2017, and this interaction took place sometime in January of 2017. The right to record police is relatively fundamental, and although it has not been directly ruled on by the Supreme Court, many higher courts have affirmed this right. There are some exceptions to recording the police, and officers are generally within their authority to order citizens to film from a safe location. The time, place, and manner restrictions associated with the First Amendment also apply to recording police, and government officials are allowed to dictate appropriate locations for expressive acts. All that said, the clued officers are attempting to assert the notion that Mr. Seam is interfering with their investigation under the language of Texas Penal Code 38.15 which states that a person commits an offense if the person with criminal negligence interrupts, disrupts, impedes, or otherwise interferes with a peace officer while the peace officer is performing a duty or exercising authority imposed or granted by law. The key phrase of this code is, with criminal negligence. And although recording the police is not necessarily a criminal act, citizens who choose to record the police must do so in a manner that does not interfere with the officer's ability to carry out their duties. Mr. Seam was not interfering with the officers, and the officers cannot order him to leave the scene simply because he was recording. The officers would have been within their authority to offer Mr. Seam an alternative location to safely record the interaction, but instead, they ordered him to leave the scene completely. Can you call a supervisor out and I can talk to him? We've already talked to him, okay? C can you tell me what law I'm breaking? You're interfering with our traffic stop, okay? In what way am I doing that? You're interfering, because we're over here speaking with you, okay? Isn't it, uh, the Supreme Court has upheld our right just All to right, film police officers. I'll just tell you one more time. Are you gonna leave or not? You can either leave right now with your kids in your vehicle. Okay, so you're threatening my family with force then, is that what it is? No. We're asking you to leave. And you're gonna use force against me no, if I don't I'm leave. you are gonna be arrested if y'all don't leave our traffic. So you're gonna, at the point of a gun, you're gonna threaten harm to my family, is that correct? I never said that. That's what you're saying. Okay, okay. Well, one, one, one more chance. Either leave the scene or step out of the vehicle and you're gonna be arrested. Okay, well, since you're threatening my life, I'm gonna move away from the scene because you guys are threatening the, my life and the life of my, my four kids in here. Um, you are well outside the law. And normally, if I was by myself, I would probably refuse, but I got my family in the car. You are breaking the law right now. You're violating your oath. You're acting as criminals. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move somewhere else and film you to make sure that you're not on tour to this. I want your, what's your badge number, ma'am? It's 208. Okay. I, I, you, I intend to have you held accountable for this. All what's right, your rank? Leave, please. I will, I will move is what okay. I will do. I'm not going to leave. Well I'm going to move where I want to, ma'am. Okay. Goodbye. How you doing, sir? How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I'm feeling very threatened by the behavior of your officers here. Okay. Because I'm exercising my First Amendment right. Sure. And you guys are acting like bullies, or they are rather. I don't want to speak for you. I don't know you. I'll go ahead and identify, identify myself. I'm Sergeant Park from the Clue Police Department. Are you a supervisor of these guys? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Well, I'm glad you're here because um, they just they threatened my family's life just now. How so? Because they said that we were both going to be arrested. I got four kids in the car. Mm -hmm. If we were both arrested, mm -hmm. not only that, my wife has no control over me driving my vehicle. Right. I'm 30 feet back from them. We as the civilianry, sir, yes. we have to look over our shoulders all the time mm -hmm. to see if we're being followed or if we're going to be harassed and collected by a police officer in today's You're not America. Doing anything wrong. You don't have to worry about us. That's nonsense because I wasn't doing anything wrong and they just threatened to arrest me and my wife, which would result in my kids being taken by child protective, protective services thousands of miles from my home. Would you consider that a threat if you were out and about? You're good. Go back. You're good. I don't understand. You seem like a reasonable, calm person. Absolutely. I don't understand how you cannot understand the situations we face. You, as the officers, are supposed to be out here keeping the peace and de-escalating situations. Exactly. They, and, they're under arrest because they have warrants for their arrest. That's not our fault. They didn't pay their tickets. So what kind of tickets are they? I'm not allowed to tell you that because- You are allowed. It's public no, record. It's Okay, well, if it's public record, you can go research it, but I'm not going to disclose you have no relation to the person being arrested, so I don't, I don't know. Feel, They're humans. I don't feel comfortable <laughs> releasing their information. Okay, to fair you. enough. Okay. Okay. You've got somebody that's got, let's say, three or four traffic tickets, whatever it might be on their record. Maybe it's a burnout taillight. And you think it's law to go out and take people's cars to impound, lock them away in jails with no victim because their taillight was burned out? Does that seem okay to you? The only Is thing that America? That we do, whenever we see a traffic offense, we just issue the citation. We don't do any judgment. That's for the judge to do. No, it's not. It You're is. all accountable. Is. That is the procedure. We Haven't just you... issue the ticket and then they get a court date or whatever. The judge sets the fine. Now, if they don't 
take care of their fine or whatever. The municipality is the one that issues the warrant. Isn't there right and wrong? Aren't you accountable, just like the people in the Nuremberg trials? If you I don't know how that, the difference in right and wrong plays into what we're talking about, though. It's All we know is it comes back that they have an active warrant, and then we have to take them in to jail. That's our job. We have no, no choice. There's no. That's nonsense. It's there's not no your choice. Job. Your job is this right here, sir. Do you have a copy of this right here? I don't carry it around with me. Well, you should. You don't. Do you don't carry the Constitution. Do you know what the Sixth Amendment is? The Fourth Amendment. You don't. You don't carry a copy of the Constitution. We don't carry a copy of the Constitution with us, sir. Why? We I want you to keep that. You, you need one. No, that's I'm the best. I'm not going to take your. Property. That is your law book. I have plenty of those. I'm going to leave it right here because I'm not going to take your property. Okay. The grander notion that Mr. Seam is alluding to is that the status quo of policing has drifted far from the foundational intent of the law established in the Constitution. And although Mr. Seam asserts this idea rather candidly. He does have a point. In the book, Overcriminalization, the Limits of the Criminal Law, Rutgers University law scholar Douglas Husack estimated that approximately 70% of American adults have committed a crime that could lead to imprisonment. Mr. Husack also points out that federal laws alone include around 3,000 crimes, and over half of those laws are scattered throughout various statutes that are not included in the official federal criminal code. Any citizen who wished to abide by the law to the very letter would be hard-pressed to even locate all the laws much less draw a complete understanding of them. Mr. Husack goes on to note that in addition to these statutes, there are over 300,000 federal regulations that may be criminally enforceable at the discretion of various administrative agencies. It is all but impossible for the average citizen to garner a complete understanding of the legalities that dictate this country, and nearly every citizen is subject to being stopped by police officers for frivolous violations. What is even more concerning is that in the 1996 case of Wren v. United States, the Supreme Court ruled that officers may use any violation, no matter how trivial or victimless, to initiate an investigation. For example, an officer may stop an individual for loitering in the hopes that the individual is guilty of possessing drugs, so long as the person was actually loitering. This is what is known as a pretextual stop, and it is a common tactic used by members of law enforcement to secure more serious charges by way of investigating negligible crimes. This is not to say that policing does not serve a legitimate purpose, and law and order are essential to the success of a democratic society, but Mr. Seam's sentiment that ethics and morality have been set aside in favor of the enforcement of law bears some merit, and there is no doubt that some measure of the Constitution's spirit has been lost within the complex entanglement of its enforcement. 203, what was the location of that call I was in route to? Area of 4th Street and Wiley. First caller was from 1150, 4th Street, second caller was from 516 Wiley. What was the nature of the call? Hearing of gunshots in the area. That is why I have to leave. Do you understand? Well, okay, okay so but if, you if came you, out here. Please, it wasn't too urgent, you, or you wouldn't have come out here. Well, I was concerned for the safety of my I officers. was concerned okay. for the safety of my family, and okay. your officers threatened them, I'm and I want some you. disciplinary action taken on that front. Everything is going good. If you would please just maintain your distance where you're at right now, I would greatly appreciate it. I'm going to go ahead and go. Okay? What I want you to think about tonight, I know that you have this idea that you do your job, but just remember, there's no just doing your job. There's right or wrong. You took an oath to this Constitution, whether you carry a copy or not. Okay, well, and this Constitution right and wrong is law. an opinion, okay? So no, it's harassing police officers is probably considered wrong to most people. We're just trying to do our I'm job. I'm not harassing anyone. You're, I'm, we're I'm trying observing to do our you. job. You're trying to make our job harder, okay? That's Actually, all you're I doing. made no contact. Okay. You realize that your officers contacted me. I didn't endanger orders. them. I did not orders. endanger them. But they I didn't was come well and out of distance. You. They didn't do anything like that. All I, I wasn't giving them do, that option. All I wanted you to do is just keep your distance to where you're at. My right distance now. was kept. I was 10 feet away, sir. The difference between where I am now and there was nonsensical. Okay. You just wanted to exert okay, your look, authority. I just want you to see, stay about this distance. I'm away. not. Okay. The only reason I moved is because you guys threatened my family with violence. Okay, we didn't threaten anything. Yes, you did. You That's what an arrest is. You were threatened that you'd be placed under arrest for interfering with the police And if I had attempted to defend myself, I wasn't interfering with nothing. You guys were leaving okay. your police investigation. I'm trying to make sure that no interference happens. I'm trying. The to only make one sure that's interfered that here, escalates. sir, is you. The only one that's violated their oath is your officers. And that's what you need to think about. If you got a call, I don't want to keep you from it. You better get going. I am. You have a nice night. You too. Sergeant Park left the scene without further incident, and Mr. Seam was not cited or detained. Not long after this interaction took place, Mr. Seam left the United States and currently resides in Mexico. To get the full details of Mr. Seam's story, I would suggest taking a look at his channel, which is linked in the description below. Overall, Officer Garcia and Officer Cantrell get a C-, minus for threatening to arrest Mr. Seam for filming their interaction, failing to offer Mr. Seam an alternative location for filming, and neglecting to employ any measure of de-escalation at any point. 
Over the years, filming the police has become more normalized, but the pervasiveness of First Amendment activism is still struggling to reach the rural areas of America, and this interaction is a testament to that. An officer's inexperience is often a major factor in determining the outcome of any audit, and the attitude of these two officers could likely be attributed to rarely having dealt with being recorded. However, that does not excuse their actions, and there are many aspects of this encounter that could have been handled with a higher degree of professionalism and respect for the law. It's worth noting that the officers chose to call their commanding officer before taking any action, and although they issued idle threats, the officers waited for their supervisor to arrive before moving forward with those threats. Contacting a supervisor was the right thing to do in this situation, and as much as the officers got wrong during this interaction, they did manage to get one thing right. Sergeant Park gets an A+, for setting aside his ego and approaching Mr. Seam with a measure of objectivity, engaging in a peaceful dialogue with Mr. Seam, and making a genuine attempt to listen to and understand Mr. Seam's concerns. Sergeant Park remained cordial and professional throughout his conversation with Mr. Seam, and, instead of blindly attempting to justify the actions of his officers, he took the time to address Mr. Seam's concerns in a respectful and authentic way. The sergeant even went as far as discussing philosophical issues of policing that extended far beyond the context of this interaction, and did not take offense to any of Mr. Seam's points. I commend Sergeant Park for his patience and dedication to peacefully resolving this encounter, and for his ability to set aside the ideological barriers of being a police officer to have a sincere conversation with Mr. Seam. The sergeant's demeanor throughout this interaction demonstrates the notion that not all police officers are consumed by their ego and blind loyalty to their department, and there are officers who wish to maintain a positive relationship with members of their community. That is certainly a message that could use more attention in such a polarized society. Mr. Seam gets a B plus, because although Mr. Seam was well within his rights to film the clued officers, he misrepresented the case law surrounding recording the police, exaggerated the implications of being arrested, and maintained a relatively hostile demeanor throughout the encounter. A threat of arrest is not equivalent to a threat to life, and Mr. Seam's assertion that the officers threatened his life is inaccurate. Although the officers were wrong to issue a threat of arrest, Mr. Seam overstated the gravity of their intentions, and police officers are often criticized for using the very same tactic of distorting the truth that Mr. Seam employed here. Mr. Seam also said that the Supreme Court had upheld the right to record police, but the Supreme Court has never ruled on the issue because the right has been so thoroughly established among the circuit courts. Misrepresenting case law does nothing to advance a movement or educate citizens or police officers, and only serves to discredit the movement as a whole. While I commend Mr. Seam for taking the time to record the traffic stop, I do not agree with his tactics or certain elements of his philosophy. All citizens are entitled to exercising their rights as they see fit, so long as it falls within the scope of constitutional protection. But maintaining a radicalized perspective will likely degrade the credibility of your actions and craft a narrative that fails to see the whole picture. Nonetheless, Mr. Seam's story is worth looking into, and I encourage you all to take a look at his channel and draw your own conclusions about his conduct. Let us know if there's an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more police interaction content.